Alright guys, I am back with my review of this week's WWE Monday Night Raw for January 13th, 2014. And the show starts off with Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan versus the Usos. And eventually Harper and Rowan get involved, so the Wyatt family is disqualified. And the Usos fight them off and leave. And Bray Wyatt hits the sister Abigail on Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan offers himself as a sacrifice to the group, so Wyatt lays him out with the sister Abigail, and then they leave together. Kind of reminded me of the Ministry of Darkness when Undertaker would whip Christian when he lost matches. But if I was Daniel Bryan, I would look at Bray Wyatt and say, Look, I have no problems kicking the crap out of the Usos, but when are we going to start taking down the machine? <laughs> because I know the machine doesn't care about me, but they care even less about the Usos. It's John Cena versus Damian Sandow. Cena wins with the AA. Match was good, but there was a, a botch or two in this one. At one point, Sandow looked like he was going for a neck breaker, and it turned into crossroads or some shit like that. Then they talk about WWE Network again, and like I said in my review of last week's SmackDown show, I think it's a great deal. $9.99 a month for all the old footage, all the pay-per-views, all the shows, plus new content. Um, I'm definitely going to get it and I'll do a review of the network after like a month or two. Then we see Kane talking to Brad Maddox backstage, and Maddox says something like, great way to start the show, the Wyatts are causing chaos already, and Kane says, well, could you do a better job or something? I can't really remember all that, but Maddox says, yeah, how about tonight? It's going to be Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan versus the Usos in a steel cage, and then Kane says, okay, that's a good idea, but how about it's a steel cage match where the door is locked and I'm the only one with a key? And I was like, okay. <laughs> that didn't really add anything to it, but whatever. So it's Big Show versus Jack Swagger. Very short match here. Big Show wins with a choke slam. And they're trying to build Big Show back up since he's going to face Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. But after the match, he chases Cesaro away and he grabs Zeb Coulter. And he acts like he's going to punch him. And I'm thinking, Big Show's a babyface. He's not really going to punch him. You can see how scared Zeb Coulter is. He's going to let him go. It's the babyface thing to do. Big Show punches this old man in his fucking face. I couldn't believe this. I hope Brock Lesnar kills this son of a bitch. It's CM Punk and the New Age Outlaws versus The Shield. And this was a good match. So The Shield is beating down Punk for a very long time. Punk is reaching for a hot tag. And the New Age Outlaws jump off the apron and leave. They leave Punk hanging and leave him with all three members of the Shield. And I thought this was really cool because I did not expect this at all. Where they're going with this, I'm not really sure. I was thinking maybe they would form a legend stable who were like pissed off at the younger guys, or they're going to join up with the authority because Triple H is in charge and they used to be in DX together, something like that. That's probably more likely. But the New Age Outlaws leave Punk hanging. So he's left with all three members of the Shield. He tries to fight him off, but Roman Reigns spears him for the win, and afterwards the Shield triple power bombs him. The Wyatt family cuts a promo talking about the Steel Cage match later. Then we get AJ and Tamina versus the Funkin' Actles. AJ beats Cameron with the Shining Wizard. Then she tells Tamina to destroy Cameron, and Naomi runs in and fights him off with her ass. Randy Orton is pissed off. He's looking for the authority. And he starts yelling at Kane, and Kane says he can go vent his frustrations out on Kofi Kingston. And this makes Randy Orton happy, so he leaves. <laughs> then we find out that Ultimate Warrior is the first inductee into the 2014 Hall of Fame. And I feel that he definitely deserves to be in there. I think it's funny they're putting him in after all that shit they talked about him, but he definitely deserves it. And that speech is going to be very interesting. Alright, so Paul Heyman cuts a promo on the Big Show and says that... He basically calls Big Show a dumbass. And he says that he's not impressed by Big Show knocking out an old man like Zeb Coulter. And then we get Randy Orton versus Kofi Kingston, which was another good match. But Kofi Kingston wins with the SOS. I did not expect that at all. That was a huge surprise. Um, I'm sure Orton's going to kill him on SmackDown, though, but... Kofi Kingston actually beat the WWE World Champion here. So afterwards, Orton is really pissed off. He just he snaps, 
and Cena's dad was in the audience, so Orton goes over and punches him in the head a few times, and he's just out. Cena runs down and chases Orton away, and then he's checking on his dad. And, uh, these girls who were obviously there with Cena's dad, or plants, or whatever they were, were screaming. It was so obnoxious and stupid. And there was some Mexican guy walking around who looked like that little person on the Chelsea Lately show. I think his name's Chewy. <laughs> he looked just like that little Mexican guy. Uh, but yeah, they had the girls fake screaming like, Oh my God, stop this. And it was just really dumb. Anything involving Cena's father is dumb. Unless he's being punted in the skull. It's Goldust and Cody Rhodes versus Ryan Baxel. Very boring match here. Uh, Cody Rhodes hits crossroads on Curtis Axel for the win, and that was it. This one lasted way too long. Then it's Del Rio versus Rey Mysterio. This was another boring match, but at least it was shorter. And Del Rio wins with the arm breaker. Afterwards, he cuts another promo on Batista. They're trying to build Del Rio back up to face Batista, but I don't know if Del Rio is the right guy for this feud. I mean, people care about Batista, but... I think because of Del Rio, no one really gives a shit about the feud. And I know they haven't really done anything yet, but still you would think there'd be some hype for it. Like Batista's returning and he's going to face Alberto Del Rio? Like what? Kane tells Punk that he's been entered into the Royal Rumble. Then we get a weird promo from the Usos where they combine their faces together. And then it's the Steel Cage match. Daniel Bryan and Bray Wyatt versus the Usos. And I actually thought this match was pretty bad. Um, crowd seemed dead as hell. There was a this is awesome chant, but it felt like a pity this is awesome chant. But anyways, the Usos win. They escape the cage and they take out Harper and Rowan on the outside. And Daniel Bryan is left on the inside with Bray Wyatt. And Bray Wyatt gets ready to hit the sister Abigail again, tells Daniel Bryan to sacrifice himself. And Daniel Bryan refuses. And since they're locked in the cage, he just beats the crap out of Bray Wyatt and hits him with a flying knee. And that was the end of the show. But how did Daniel Bryan know <laughs> that joining the Wyatt family would eventually lead to a steel cage match where Kane would lock the door? Like, how did he know all of that? But despite that, I still like the ending. But I have to say this was an average Raw. It was a really good Raw up until that last hour. Once it, that tag match happened, and then the Del Rio match, and then the Steel Cage match wasn't very good, I was like, man, this just, it got really boring is what happened. So it was a good Raw up until the last hour. So I have to say this was an average show overall. But anyways, that's my review. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts in the show in the comments, and thanks for watching.